Welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to take a look at Imagine AI. Imagine AI is a service that is really awesome for Lightroom users, particularly photographers who shoot large volumes of images. So let's say you're an event photographer, you're a photojournalist, and you want a quick way to edit a whole bunch of images at one time. This is a huge lifesaver because Imagine AI actually uses AI to do a lot of your image editing and you base it off of color profiles that either you create or you select from their library. I've talked about them before. It is been a while, I think it was last year when I last mentioned them, and I wanna talk a little bit about how far they've come because they've added a whole bunch of features that are massive time savers in here. So for example, culling is a big one. So if you've got a session and you've got several hundred images and a lot of them are very like, you can use AI to actually pick the best one and Imagine will help you do that. Another thing that's really cool is things like subject masking. They also have skin smoothing that's gonna be coming soon. So what I wanna do today is walk you through the process, show you how easy and seamless this is to use and uh, maybe it's something you wanna to add to your own workflow. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've got Lightroom opened up right now and I wanna talk just for a second about the catalog. So there's basically two different ways that people tend to work in Lightroom. You can either keep one master catalog full of everything, or some people like to work in separate individual catalogs specifically for clients. I'm one of those people who works with one catalog and I literally have hundreds of thousands of images in this catalog. Now, Imagine AI will work with this and you can go in and specify exactly what you want uh, Imagine AI to deal with, but I would also recommend though, because the catalog is so big and it's gonna have to call that out, that a faster way to work is actually to keep a separate catalog. So for this demo, I've actually created a new catalog of images and there's a oh, hundred ish images in here, which gives us a nice sampling. And I've also got a variety of images in here for different situations. So you can see just in different lighting situations and whatnot, what Imagine AI is gonna do for you. So the first thing we're gonna do is launch Imagine AI, which is a standalone application. All right, so once the interface is loaded here, you're going to see on the left-hand side of your little navigation, there's home and then there's two concepts here I wanna talk about. There's AI profiles and there's also projects. Now, the way we work with Imagine AI is we're going to work by the project. So a project is the collection of images that you want edits applied to. So that's our project. Now, what we're going to do is those edits are called AI profiles. Now, there's two types of profiles that we can be working with. You can create your own profiles and this is a little bit involved because it's gonna take, uh, they say about 3,000 and images for Imagine AI to analyze and to create a profile for, and those images need to reflect your specific style, or you can use their own presets, and I'll show you where those are. So if we go under AI profiles, you're going to see personal AI profiles, that would be one that I would make, and you're gonna see talent AI profiles. So I'm gonna click on that, and you're going to see there's a whole bunch of them in here I can select from. If I say compare styles, you can actually go in and get a preview, and you can change the preview image if you want. You can select which ones you want to preview, and this is gonna give you kind of an idea of what it is that you're going for. So the idea is that we're going to take a group of images in Lightroom, we are going to send those to Imagine AI, is going to apply all the edits, and it's going to allow us to download those edits, bring them into our catalog, everything is done for us. We don't have to go image by image. So you can start to see where this is really handy if you have a ton of images that you're working with. I'm gonna go ahead for this example. I'm gonna use one of their preset profiles. I'm gonna use this one called California Dreaming. So basically you just say use to edit and it's going to say which type of photos will be the most common in this project. So it's gonna create the project for us. I'm gonna go ahead and say landscape and nature. I'll be honest, they're all over the place, but there are a lot of landscape and nature images in here. And it's going to ask us where is our Lightroom catalog. Now I created a new catalog just just for this and so I've already got that in a folder here so I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop that onto the interface here and it's going to ask us for a little, few more setup items so you can see on the right hand side here uh, these are all the photographs that I have here and they are cataloged in folders by date so that's what you're seeing there on the left hand side of the screen first thing I want to do is give this a name I'm just going to call this imagine demo for now and if we scroll down you're going to see some more options so the AI profile that we have is the California dreaming profile then we have some additional AI tools so we can ask it to crop if we want to do that. Uh, I'm gonna leave my crops as is, but I do want everything straightened just in case the camera's a little bit off. We can also add subject mask to all leaves. And this is really nice. Let's say if you have a backlit subject and you wanna mask out the subject, Lightroom has some really powerful tools for that. And this will go ahead and do that for you. I'm not gonna worry about that this round. And then if we scroll down, I can put some filters on here. And this is great if you're using a much larger Lightroom catalog, or you already know that you don't want certain images to be edited, then you can go ahead and say, 
say the star rating needs to be five stars or two stars or whatever you want to set that at, and it will only affect those images with star ratings. Another thing I need to do is go ahead and select all of these because these are all the images that I want affected. This is a really easy project because I just want the entire catalog that I made uploaded, but you can go in and specify specifically what images you want, and the next thing I'm going to do is say upload. And you're going to get a little status bar over on the right-hand side up there, and it's going to update our package. On completion, your projects will be uploaded. So it's going to be working behind the scenes on this. Now, I've actually found that this is not too bad with 100 images or so. We're already 20% into this, and it's only been a few seconds here, but it does give you a status indication of where you are, where your uploads are going. So at this stage in the process, Imagine AI is actually using a DNG compressor to actually give you compressed files for upload, so it's not going to take as long as uploading all of your raw files. So the upload is pretty fast, will depend on your connection speed and probably some other variables, but once you've uploaded it, it's going to take a couple minutes to go through all of the edits. Now, I've given it 100 images, it's already done. Obviously, if I gave it 1,000 or more images, it's going to take a little bit longer, but it's pretty much done, and now it's ready for download to review. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Let's download the edits, and it's going to give me a little warning that just says downloading the edits will overwrite, and basically this means if you were to download it a second time, it's going to delete anything you may have done in the middle. But we're going to go ahead and continue because I haven't seen these yet, and we are downloaded. I'm going to go ahead and open my Lightroom catalog, and uh, we're going to see what it did here. So it takes a second for these to build, but you can see that already ready. Yeah, it's straightening them and they look like they've been edited. This is not bad so far. And so what we're going to do is go in here and I'll select uh, this image for instance. Let's go ahead and go into develop mode here. And you can see that we've applied a curves adjustment here. My sliders have been moved and it's fine-tuned everything to make this a really good looking edit. So I'm going to do a quick before and after. Here's before, here's after. I love how it toned those greens really well. That's actually very nice. Uh, we'll check out a couple more here. Let's pick something that's very different, like let's say here's a night image. So let's go ahead and do a quick before and after on this one. So here's before, here's after, and yeah, it really brought up a lot of those shadow details. This is a really good way to work, and of course, you can see what edits were made over here on the right-hand side, and it's going to be different for each image. It's not like it's just applying a preset, so to speak, on an image. It's actually treating these on an image-by-image -image basis. Now, the other advantage to this is that, let's say you have an image that it's pretty close, but it's not quite how you like it. The white balance needs to be tweaked a little bit, or maybe your highs need to be rolled off. You can go in and actually do that, but what this does is it gives you a really good starting point. And like I said, if you've got literally like hundreds or thousands of images from a session that you're trying to cull down, and get into a sizable number and manageable in terms of editing. This is a really good tool. So for example, oh, I'm going to scroll down here because I had some really oddball stuff at the end here. Yeah, so for instance, uh, the Koi Pond image here. This is an image that I typically like a lot more contrast on just because that water gets a little milky. So one thing I can do is just change my edits. I'm going to bring down the exposure somewhat. Let's go ahead and bump the contrast up and that way I get rid of a lot of that texture and I'm going to bring my whites up too because it's just a little too dark at this point. And that's starting to look pretty pretty good there. So quick before and after, there's the images that were shot, and here's the edit. So again, it's really easy to go in and override anything, but this just gets me to the end faster than it would be if I was doing each one of these on a case-by-case -case basis. So I went with one of the preset profiles because I wanted to give you an example of how powerful this really is, but if you want to start creating your own profiles, essentially there's two ways you can go. Now the traditional way is to create your own custom profile, which traditionally takes about 3,000 images or so for Imagine to actually learn the style that you're going after. But there's another way that they've introduced called light profiles, and this is really cool. I'm going to show this to you. So if we go back over to the software here, um, when I select create your own profile, and I'm under the AI profiles tab here, it's going to give me an option. Here's the light personal AI profile, and here's the personal AI profile. Now this one's obviously recommended, but if you want an original way that's just kind of easy to get started, I can go ahead and select this. I can upload a preset at this point that I've developed, and so that gives, imagine, a starting point. So I'm going to make Make a preset, we'll upload this, Imagine it's going to know what that is, and then we're going to answer some questions about our preferences for white balance, color tinting, that kind of thing, and then we've got a light profile that we can actually build on. So that might be an interesting way for some people to work. And another new feature with Imagine that's really cool is they now offer cloud storage for photographers. Now this is the first cloud storage solution that's just dedicated to raw files. And the way that it works 
is you have an option if you're going to store photos in the cloud where you can actually store all your raw photos using their own compression. It is a lossless compression that won't mess up with your images or destroy your image quality, but it's going to give you four times as much space as you would have on another cloud solution. So this is actually something that is very cool. So I will drop a link in the show description if you want to learn more about Imagine. It's an awesome service, especially when you have those high volumes of photos for people who shoot a lot of events, stuff where you come back and you've got enormous amount of photos for each session and you want some help in editing those. And so the pricing on this starts, well, you can sign up for an account for free and you get 1,500 image credits. So that'll get you through the first 1,500 images. And then there's basically two options that you have. You can do a pay-as-you-go, which ends up being about five cents an image. And if you're working in higher volume and you want a bigger price break, they do have some subscription models uh, that are available for that as well. So uh, anyway, check it out, see if it's right for you. I think it's a pretty awesome service, especially when you're working in high volume. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.